Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. And today we have a very special <laughs> guest, one of the co stars of the Netflix's The Umbrella Academy, Ken Hall. Ken, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing great, John. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. I've been looking forward to this. So let's just get right to it. Uh, let's do it. You are an award winning comedian. Um, did you start? How did you start out? Did you start out doing stand up and then you got into acting? How did your career take off? Yeah, it was. Uh, I kind of found it a bit later in life. Uh, I quit drinking when I was 28, and I didn't really do much in my 20s. Uh, I played drums in a, in a punk band, but uh, didn't really have any <laughs> particular skills or talents and abilities. And uh, so uh, when I quit drinking when I was about 28 or so, I, I, uh, I started this process of really trying to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. And uh, it, I took a couple of years of creative writing, night school classes, and it was actually around that time I, I realized that I was actually a creative person. I had no idea and it was really cool that I, I was stepping way outside of my comfort zone and what was familiar and I, I stumbled upon a beginner's acting class through the Toronto District School Board here in Toronto to do a night school class like a beginner's drama yeah. night school class and it was terrifying I was like because it was so uh, unfamiliar to me it was so not who how I had seen myself mm -hmm. for for so long and to make that decision to step uh, uh, way outside of, you know, go out on that limb and try something new uh, was a really big risk. And, and I realized since then, this idea of taking risks is really important. And mm -hmm. I found that that's such a, it works so well in comedy, and, but it also, the rules of comedy actually, and the rules of improv in particular, because after taking that first drama class, I was hooked pretty much literally the first class mm -hmm. within the three hours. I'm like, this is it. This is the very, this is a huge part of what I felt had been missing in my life. And it just felt kind of natural for me. It made sense and it was fun. Mm -hmm. And my life hadn't been fun in quite a while yeah. since I was a kid, really. It was just kind of like, let's just get through life. Let's just survive it. But in actuality, finding this beginner drama class and then the improv classes at the second city here in Toronto, things started to really fall into place. I would say fairly quickly, to be honest, I realized early on, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've been so afraid of trying things. I've been so afraid of, of going outside of my comfort zone, just trying to stick with what I know uh -huh. that I was so unhappy. And that's why it was so it's such an amazing eye opening experience where it became like it was like my world was black and white and then i found improv and then it turned into like uh imax and surround sound and, and everything and i loved it and i just really took to it and it felt very natural and i love the people associated with that so uh i have done stand up i've maybe done it about 20 times but that came years later okay. for me what got my start was doing improv classes and i just recommend improv for everyone doesn't mean that you're going to be a performer but it it, it just opens you up as a person and i think that it can really begin to uh, uh sort of showcase more of your personality and connecting with other people and shifting your mindset from from cynicism perhaps or being closed-minded or being negative into saying yes and being open to things and when you started doing improv did you discover a whole side to yourself that you never knew existed yeah it was uh, uh, well, you know, it's it's funny you mention that because uh, once I started doing it, I realized and recognized that I had these qualities when I was a kid mm -hmm. and with people that I felt really comfortable with, which weren't a lot of people back, you know, uh, as I said, I had so much fear and anxiety and never felt like I fit in this world and hard, you know, social anxiety, like hard to talk to people even. But like I have an older brother and, and certain friends that I, I would open up to and feel very comfortable with. So when I was doing improv, it kind of flashed back to these moments of like, oh yeah, that's what it's like to play pretend. Yeah. And that's what it's just like to feel free in those moments. I think that's why so many adults find it later in life and they're, cause yeah. they've forgotten, they've forgotten how to play and they forget they've disconnected from a younger part of themselves because they're so driven on, you know, within more of a North American context of like acquiring material wealth, you know, status, you know, all of these things that, appear to be important but the the little kid in us that, that that still wants to play that still wants to be silly 
that that kind of gets put on the shelf, absolutely forgotten about. And so for me, that's why I I like oh I kind of feel like how I felt when I was a kid, and maybe that's why I love it so much because I'm like I just I'm making up for some lost time. And you're a natural at it. I mean, you're just an extremely funny person to watch on the screen. Um, you. you are very open. I have to mention this about your height. you you mentioned mm-hmm. that on your social media, you, mm-hmm. you embrace it, which I think is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> when you, you were starting as an actor, uh, did you feel that, were you afraid that your height was sort of gonna compre- uh, put you in a box and only allow you to play <laughs> certain roles that you might not be happy with? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, that's always there. I mean, and, and I appreciate you sharing that of, of, uh, cause I can't hide my height. You know, I'm four, I'm four, seven and three quarters. There is no denying I am small. <laughs> like there's just no denying that. And that's one of the things that obviously, you know, when you meet me in person, it's like, wow, like what's going on? You're so tiny, man. Like, and, uh, but then, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm learned to live with that and, and in a weird way, it's it, finding film and TV and improv in particular was a way to begin to sidestep it, which initially something that I felt incredibly self-conscious about and, and a lot of shame and a lot of like sadness and loneliness based on the fact that I am physically different than many people in this world. And uh, people with differences, quote unquote differences, you know, it, it's we don't really see that necessarily reflected in on screens and it's yeah. uh, you know it's all of those things that especially for short men as well we it's it's we're made fun of quite often you know and and i was very cognizant of that so to go back to your question of like and i i kind of experienced this to be honest of of things that roles that i would get cast in quite often I'm like man i've done so many elf roles like you know i i know that i know that really well mm-hmm. i know that territory and i'm good at it i can do it um, and I have my first few gigs were on a couple of shows called Freak Encounters and Scare Tactics, which was actually playing monsters. Wow. It's like it's like reality TV shows where friends and family yeah. like put each other up to get like to get terrified, basically. So I'd often be the monsters that would jump out at the end of the night after their height, you know, after their fear has been like built up to a crescendo. And I make that reveal and, and, and I really loved that. Actually, it was really fun. I, I felt kind of guilty because I'm like, I don't want to hurt people. You know, I don't, I, I want to scare them, but I don't want to scare them too well because I don't want to, I, I don't want them to like have trauma uh, based on that, you know? Um, but it was, and I've seen this in my improv and I've seen this, throughout my performative experience, I've been doing improv for about 17, 18 years now. And, and my height, my physical, my physicality, I wouldn't even say my height is my physicality. It's how I am in my body and how I love moving in my body and how I just am what I am undeniably. So instead of trying to fight it, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just accepting what is I'm there bullshit. and playing with what is there. Yeah. yeah but you know, it's, it's not even, I'm not even consciously like, uh, like that raw, raw, like just, I got him embrace and empower you know positive power power of positive thought i'm just i just am you know what exactly. i mean like it's just yeah. and uh and it's, it's a hard road and i've had this my my agent is really great i've only had one agent my whole life for i think 12 years now and and uh you know that's part of our conversation i've had to have that conversation with her and she's been very open about it of, of like if there's anything any roles that she sends me out for that i don't like that are not that are that are that see if my height as more as a punchline no. rather than actually see me as, as a comedic actor and what I can bring to the table. So there's been not a lot, to be honest, where, where I've turned things down where I'm like, that doesn't feel good for me. Um, and now I'm at a place where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm being seen, I hope, more for the acting skills that I bring to the mm-hmm. table, more of my, my, my comedy chops. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and I think it's, you know, I think I've kind of proved myself that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without people are so much. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And, you know, people are so much more than, you know, what you just see on the surface level. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it is being, uh, it's part of that. And I still see that showing up Yeah. of, yeah. you know, uh, from time to time. But uh, I am what I am. And I, I just like. We all great. are what we are. We can't change it, really. There you go. So there let's go. go now into the Umbrella Academy. All right. A uh, very right. popular Netflix show. It recently uh, aired its third season. You mm-hmm. play Herb, 
Uh, and in the the this season that just ended, you also played Pogo's body as well. So- yeah, and I did that right from season one. I actually started on Umbrella Academy playing the body of Pogo. Oh. And that was my first initial, you know, introduction to that world. And I, I'd done a lot of prosthetic work in my life. Uh, I was on a show called People of Earth where I played this gray-headed alien. And as I said, those shows of like scare tactics and freak encounters many, many years ago when I first started. So this was a, a real cool experience to, oh, yeah. to, to physicalize like a uh, chimpanzee and yet very human-like and yet old at the same time. So it was uh, quite a few balls that I was juggling. I got to mention, I love your IMDb profile photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love great. that Thanks, photo. Man. So when you, you know, when the Umbrella Academy uh, opportunity came your way, mm-hmm. what did you know about it? Because it, it, its origins do come from a comic book. Yeah. Uh, and what did you know about Herb, the character, if anything at all? Well, Herb wasn't in, uh, Herb's not in the graphic novel. This, this actually, uh, so when I first got the, the, uh, first got the gig, uh, thankfully there's like, oh, there's a graphic novel. I can actually read and, you know, and understand more of this world. And, uh, it's written by Gerard Way, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. And, uh, and it was great. That was a nice, that was a good foundation to, to introduce myself to the world. And Herb came later on. Herb came, we were shooting season one uh, for about six months here in Toronto. And the offer to play Herb, I think, came about maybe three or three months into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, production had reached out to my agent. And my agent called me. She's like, Ken, uh, production just called me. They're very curious if if you just want to, it's a very small role, but would you like to play a person? <laughs> I'm like, I would love to play a person. Absolutely. Sign me up. And And it was. It was a very small role. It was episode six, I think. I think it was just one or two scenes, just maybe a few lines, if that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember uh, after I, I shot the Herb stuff, which was so fun. I really connected with Herb. I'm like, this is this is me. This is just an exaggerated version of me. I uh, I <laughs> um, I was talking with Steve Blackman, the the showrunner, and and he he was just saying how much he loved it. He was like, yeah, like. Like every like what you did, even though it was a few lines, he said it was laugh out loud funny, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, thank you very much. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, no, I'm more. Her, Pogo is not written to be like comedic necessarily, so, uh, but Herb is, and I love like trying to find more comedy, uh, and and both the comedy and the heart that Herb is. So, uh, we saw a little bit of Herb in season one, and then going into season two. The producers were like, we got some big ideas for Herb this season. I'm like, all right, oh, let's yeah. do it. And sure enough, we did. It was uh, just a, a really great experience. What makes Herb so funny is not so much the dialogue, which is funny mm-hmm. when it does happen, but it's, it, it's the way you move. It's it's Herb's <laughs> action. Now, mm-hmm. for people that don't know, the Umbrella Academy is uh, it's, a, it's a time travel show on Netflix, uh, to sort of simplify it. Herb, Herb works for what's called the Commission. Mm-hmm. The Commission is what oversees... Uh, time travel to make sure that events that are mm-hmm. supposed to happen in history, no matter how horri- horrific they mm-hmm. are, happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you describe Herb as, uh, you know, when it comes to his job at the commission as a mm-hmm. company man? Doesn't want to stir mm-hmm. any waves, you know, just wants to keep his head down? Yeah, I, you know, I think generally speaking, yes. I think, he, but he also, uh, I feel like, and I think a lot of people have this kind of quality as well where you know you do your task you do what's what's asked of you and then there's moments where that you rise above that that mm-hmm. you you know it's sort of like uh, embracing a bit of an inner hero that you're destined for more in mm-hmm. that sense so i think her I, herb is lovely because I, I think he's like really good at his job i think he really cares about his job and i think he cares about other people as well so i love that part of the humanity and, and the fact that you know he the, <laughs> And for season two, I think he was written to be not that great. Like he was like, not that, you know, I think he was kind of struggling, you know, to do his job or certainly the handler, Kate Walsh's character yeah. was very hard on him. <laughs> and, uh, That's an uh which, yeah, yeah, that, that, that is an understatement actually. That's, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, Herb has this uh, greater calling that he, that, uh, in, in finding maybe a more of an inner strength, I think that we all possess to be honest. Oh, yeah. Now, would you say over your time, over the your appearances, over three seasons, that you've uh, managed to make Herb your own? 
Oh yeah, very much so. And you know, I got to say too. I mean, they're the directors and the writers and such. It's great writing. <laughs> so like, that's a big part yeah. of my job. I'm like, this is good. I <laughs> like, and it's funny too because sometimes you get scripts and you're like, I don't understand what like where like what they want or what the where the comedy of this character is. But I understand it with her right away. I'm like, I get this character. I I know him. There's a lot of me, I think, within that as well. I'm like, you know, as I was saying, I think Herb generally does want to do good. I think he has a really good heart. And I think he has a lot of awkwardness and anxiety and such, oh, yeah. which I do too. So I, I feel like I was kind of born to play that part. And and the directors, I, I, I you know, to give them a lot of credit too, they've often been very encouraging of me to try stuff and to like improvise some things and, um, and, and to trust that what I'm doing you know, uh, to give me a, a bit of a runway mm -hmm. to experiment with things. <laughs> and I actually, I, I, it's funny, I got a bit of a burn uh, this past season. Uh, <laughs> one of the directors, uh, it was great because I'm like, I uh, I try to, I really try to maximize the, the screen time that I have because I want to make people laugh. I want people like to have a really good time when her comes on. I want people to really enjoy them. And so, and I'm just being, you know, my clownish self, uh -huh. like I'm trying to like physical comedy and awkwardness and like, what are all these different ways that I can manifest that in my body? And, uh, the director, <laughs> she was like, for one take, she came over and she's like, uh, for this again, can you give me like, instead of milking the whole cow, can you just give me like baby cow instead? And I'm like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's a compliment, but it's also a burn as well. <laughs> But I'm like, okay, because it's, a, you know, like, they don't have time for me to stretch out. It was like a 30 second scene. They don't, you know, they can't stretch it out for two minutes oh just because I'm, I'm trying to like, you know, like, hysterical. you know, ham it up. <laughs> Umbrella Academy is one of those shows, a lot of shows that, you know, was filming before the pandemic. And then you guys mm -hmm. had to go back uh, yeah. during the pandemic, which we're still in right now. What would mm -hmm. you say, uh, I mean, besides all the safety measures, the protocols in place, mm -hmm. uh, going back onto a show that you worked on before COVID, now going back with COVID being a mm -hmm. major factor, I mean, how did you take it as an actor? Was it unsettling? Was it scary? How did you, you know, accept it? Yeah, um, yeah, great question. I, well, I, I think Netflix did. Netflix and the production did a really great job of making of trying to make it as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And so there was uh, uh, three times. I, I remember <laughs> it felt like actually like so much of my season was actually just going to going to set to get tested and then going back home. <laughs> um, but that was it. Like that's you know, uh, and that this was we were actually uh, we were shooting well into her well into the season. Um, before vaccines came out as well. So it was like, we, you know, think about it. I'm like, wow, like that's, yeah, we, there had to be a zero tolerance within that sense. Like if one person gets six, there's so many dominoes that can fall within that. And then production's going to get shut down. Yeah. And here in Toronto, we were in a lockdown as well. So it's very vitally important that, you know, and we're so grateful that we're still able to work when so many industries were shut down. If we could do it safely, then that could maybe even be a model for other industries, perhaps, to, you know, slowly get back in, into doing things. So um, I think for me, my, my improv background, just the mindset, like I'm happy to work always, you know. Yeah. And so I have to wear a mask and a face shield and, you know, go and get tested very often and have, you know, distancing and things like that. <clears throat> well, of course, I mean, I prefer... You know, I, you know, I prefer it where we didn't have COVID and that wasn't a reality, but that was the fact. And for me, that the improv mindset is like, okay, well, this is just the reality. You just have to adjust. Go with the flow. Yeah. You just got to adjust. You got to say yes to it. And because resisting it is just going to create so much, you know, so much um, suffering in yourself. You're just going to, you know, be, you know, cynical or, or, you know, grievances and like, but you're making yourself feel worse yeah. than you need to be. And for me, there was so much more of just a gratitude of like, we can, we can still work and we're creating content for people because we had no idea how long, you know, COVID's going to last for mm -hmm. as well. And obviously so many people are at and the home. safety precautions dreaming. are still in place on every set. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, again, it's like, we're all trying to navigate it here and, um, uh, but the, the, the fact is that a, a crew 
the size of, or a team is as, as big as umbrella is if one person goes there or like if something spreads oh the other thing too we had these like buzzer um we had these tags that we wear that if you became in like something like was it like five feet or something or like a, a proximity of someone like tests positive like they're able to track it being like oh this person met up with this person for x amount of time wow. so it was that was very ingenious actually i've never uh, heard of that yeah 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 it was really you know they again because you have to because yeah. if people start to go down like if you miss a day of shooting the amount of money that gets lost is insurmountable I, I, and, yeah i totally understand uh yeah we're almost out of time but i do want to ask sure. you a little bit more about pogo yeah. uh was this your first time doing motion capture work uh was it with pogo yeah what are your thoughts on motion capture do you like it more than the prosthetics uh, prosthetics yeah. <laughs> are time consuming you gotta wear them yeah when the conditions are rough outside i can imagine it's just a big pain in the butt motion <laughs> capture you know it's exactly what it what it is you know they just capture your movements and then they cgi yeah. A body over you uh what are your feelings towards motion capture yeah i i mean it's all good i love it's a, it's easier i mean i show up and i'm like great i just have to put pants and and the jacket <laughs> on i'm good you know and prosthetic i remember when i was playing jeff the gray on people of earth that was a two-hour build every time i was on set yeah. so of course you know and call times are generally really uh really early because you're shooting for the duration of the day so quite often you're looking at 12 hour plus days and so of course i'd have to go in even earlier and sit and then da -da -da -da, they do the build and i remember with jeff in particular uh <laughs> the prosthetic that I was wearing for jeff uh the nostrils of the character were actually uh above my nostrils mm -hmm. so i couldn't breathe through my nose so they had to actually build in a bit of like we couldn't glue it completely tight against my face because i needed like the air mm -hmm. to come through my eyes like the eye sockets and my my ears are completely covered so i can't hear and then when the goggles go in when we're taking like they fogged up super quick so it was uncomfortable <laughs> it sounds that however way. however <laughs> as i said i was so grateful i'm like it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay, I'm in a bit of discomfort. It's a long day. But for the things that I get to do, this is the best. You know, like yeah, you get to go I up would... there and pretend and have fun. Exactly. You can't ask for anything more. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you so much, Ken Hall. Uh, guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out the Umbrella Academy. Uh, season three just aired a little while ago. Three full seasons are available on Netflix. Ken uh plays herb and pogo's body so you definitely got to check out ken ken i want to thank you so much for coming on here and just sharing some of your stories do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go uh yeah i would just want to say thanks very much for having me and 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 for people watching thanks for being fans of the umbrella academy and fans of herb and and pogo and such it, it's really so lovely to meet fans and to hear how people appreciate the work that we do mm -hmm. it is so much fun for me to do it on a set but then it later on when it actually gets released to hear feedback and then seeing some of the comments and such uh it is just really lovely that uh, that that it really resonates with people so i can't do it <laughs> without fans and vice versa you know like exactly. so uh, i i i'm just very appreciative of all these opportunities and to make people happy is, is a, awesome. a really great thing and you're a big fan favorite as well that that definitely counts for a lot <laughs> thank you to our audience who's tuned in live and those who will be watching this later on again thank you to our guest ken hall the umbrella academy now on netflix three full seasons available until next time, on behalf of Ken and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Good night, everybody.